Get ready! You're tuned in to Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T, bringing you the hottest trending topics on social media. Stay connected. Instagram.com slash Lovely Tea 2002. Hey, you guys. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T. Yay! Hey, you guys. Good afternoon. I hope y'all are doing good. Welcome to another episode of the podcast, honey. So I want to come on here and talk about the whole Wendy Williams, Jocelyn Hernandez situation. If you guys do not know, they are currently trending all over social media. Everybody's talking about their exchange that went down on the Wendy Williams show today. It's crazy. I'm going to go ahead and play it for you guys here. Check out their exchange and I'm going to come back with how I feel about this whole situation, honey. Miss Wendy, I, I just must say this to you first. Okay. I hope you're going to give me my flowers today. I hope you're going to honor how much work I've put out there. I hope you're going to, you know, not kind of like throw this off outside of everything that I've done. I've done, I'm, I'm an accomplished woman. And I just feel like every time I come to your show, you don't give me those flowers now, you know? And you're, Wendy, you're 35 years my, my city. Wow, yes. I should, I should, I should get those flowers Shame. by you. I should feel, I should feel, I should feel wanted by people like you. Not just me, all the other young girls. You are, are you are wanted by me. I always say that you're very we, entertaining. We, and but we feel, we, feel, we feel like you be trying us. We feel like you don't be really rooting for us. You know, we feel like, and especially with me, every time I come on your show, you always want to compare me to another broad. I don't need to be compared. I've, I've made my own brand. I'm, I've made my own brand for years, you know? I've been out here for the, the past decade. I got my own show. I franchised my own show to another network. It's, I'm, I have the number one show in the country. I, I have know. an actual cabaret no, show. No, you have the number one show on like, Zeus, and you got renewed for a third the season, number one which show, is to be commended. The number one show in the country, Miss Wendy. It's, okay. And I just want you to know that I want you to know how I feel. I want you to know that I feel like every time I come on here, you feel you undervalued. Really well, so do I. Okay, that's it, it, you know what, Jocelyn, because you're part of pop culture, this is what I do. But if you possibly think that I leave here every day and don't feel undervalued for something that I do, you know, as a woman, we're not going to even talk about race. Just as a woman, I still don't make that dollar for dollar men make. So please, anyway, shoe cam, please. Let me see your shoes. Oh, wait, but stop, Jocelyn, Jocelyn. I'm making, listen, I'm making, I'm making pretty cool money on my own show, so you should be doing the same thing. But as a woman to woman, woman to woman, and this is not about men, woman to woman, we should uphold each other higher, not go against each other or compare woman to other woman when every woman out here in the game, especially pop culture, is handling their business and is doing great. It's doing amazing. There's no other girl that came from television, that came from, I came from the gutter. I came from the streets. I came from the gutter. Give me that respect, Miss Wendy Williams. Okay. We love you, but at the same time, you have to do better. You're not, in a, you're not in an abusive relationship anymore. You don't deal with that man anymore. You should be in a better place. And when people come on your show, especially black culture, you should be nicer to us, the ladies. You should respect us. You should give us our flowers while we're here. And you should tell us how proud you are of what we've done in the streets. Well, I'm not proud of all. And what I've been through makes me even harder on young women. Like, you can do better. Now, can we get back to the show at hand? Can I see your shoes, please? If that's how you want to do it, Miss Wendy. Yes, that's I'll how I want to do it. But you have nothing to say about what, what my feelings. I just said what I said. I don't apologize for anything. This is what I do. Let me see your shoes. Jocelyn. But you only do it, but you only do it for you only do it to the young black Spanish girls coming up. You don't do it to anybody else. I don't? No, you don't. You take it so much differently. That, that, for first of all, that, that's not that true. Jocelyn, for, for people of color. Jocelyn. And it's true. It's true. Here, here's a flower. Come on. There's a flower. I just gave you flowers. You should give me more flowers. You should give me more flowers, and you should be real proud that I've accomplished what I accomplished. So Jocelyn's Cabaret airs every Sunday on the Seuss Network. I'm sure you don't know how to work this streaming app, but it's a streaming show. One of the people in there in the audience could show you, or your producers could can, show can you. Can we see your and shoes, you Jocelyn? Show. It's, the number one, it's the number one show in the Jocelyn, country. Jocelyn, Jocelyn. It's the number one show in the country, and I would like my flowers while I'm here, alive, here. I'm not gonna let you play me anymore, Miss Wendy, and I'm not gonna let anybody on national TV or anybody disrespect me. Did we just pull the plug? What, what, what is going on? Jocelyn. 
Jocelyn. Yo, yo, let me tell you. Your no, producer Jocelyn. knew that I feel like this. Jo I told him how I felt. No, yeah, he told me that you that yelled at him the whole time, the producer on the phone. Um, listen, Jocelyn, can, shoe cam, please. Sh Jocelyn, shoe cam, please. There you go, delicate and beautiful. You know, it's not just your looks, it's also your personality. You know, you've got a very unique way of, of delivering your message and, uh, and you embrace you know, and you not, not more unique than the one you do. Than well, the way you deliver well, that's message. why I have the number one show, and you can be number two. Yeah. You know why I'm with you? You know why I'm with you? Because, because I'm a respectful woman. You can have number one. I, I, I'm, Yo, listen, Jocelyn. you were here before me. You were here before me. I don't want to take your spot. I just want, I just want to do what I do. You want your fair share of the pie and you're getting it. I just, you know, I appreciate you being here. I apologize that you're so angry with me. I can only be me. I'm not angry. And I, okay. All right, so you guys just saw their back and forth. Y'all saw Jocelyn Hernandez, you know, speaking her truth as she sees it. Y'all seen Wendy Williams replying back to her. Wendy even had the nerd honey to, to grab some flowers and throw it at Jocelyn. Like, bitch, here goes your damn flowers. I'm gonna give them to you now. It's true, it's true. Here, here's a flower, come on. There's a flower, I just gave you flowers. Wendy wasn't here for the foolishness and, you know, dismissed Jocelyn a lot in that conversation. Now I see a lot of folks giving Jocelyn props and saying, yes, I'm glad she told Wendy about herself. Wendy's so rude. She always treats, you know, minorities people like this and you know anytime there's like a black show she doesn't support it and you know Jocelyn Hernandez is now the face of black culture which is very interesting to me but you know I'll hit on that in a minute so a lot of folks are just really loving this and I'm just sitting here like I'm confused about the outrage because this is what Wendy Williams does this is what Wendy Williams has always done and I feel like Jocelyn is doing all of this because she wants a moment she wants to go viral, which she did. She definitely got her moment. But let's not forget, she's trying hard to promote this show. Even last week, it was just a week ago, she came for Faith Evans hard as hell in a really, really disrespectful manner. Now, for y'all who don't know, Faith did an interview recently, and basically in that interview, she was honest, and she was saying that, you know, there was a time where she had to step back from the relationship with Stevie because, you know, Stevie was messing with her and Jocelyn at the same time, and so she decided to fall back, and, you know, basically once she fell back, Stevie realized that I guess, you know, Faith was the woman for him. So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys this snippet. Y'all go ahead and listen to this really quick. Sure, whether or not he was still involved with his ex. So, you know, when you kind of told me you guys weren't together and then shortly thereafter, you know, finding out that you still kind of were, I think that's probably when I stepped away. Because I'm not a man stealer, a home wrecker, you know. Faith was very clear that she was not going to deal with any other woman. She wasn't going to deal with that. She knew of his ways, and so she backed off. It was way too much for me. This was the main thing. If you're not really serious, please don't do this to our friendship. All right, so you guys just heard that clip. So after all of that went viral, Jocelyn Hernandez took to social media, and she went off on Faith. So let me go ahead and read this to you. So Jocelyn says, this old bitch needs to keep the bricks out the way. I ain't been with that man in four years. I'm happily with ballistic beats. Every time my TV show is about to drop, this old wore down, melted bitch has something to say to stay relevant. Bitch, you are a hoe. Your own husband told me and my husband last week, you cheated on him with some young niggas and you do it all the time. Now talk about your crazy ass kid that almost killed Bonnie under your watch. I have your husband on recording begging for my forgiveness because Bonnie could have gotten killed by that animal you call a son. That's why she's never been in your care since. Bitch, go make a song and FYI, you've been sucking Stevie's dick for years, even before I dropped his sorry ass. Bye, ho, and go watch my three TV shows that are currently playing on national television and streaming networks. Okay, so that is what she had to say to Faith Evans just a few days ago. This is the same woman crying about, you know, uplifting other women and supporting other women. So then once that went viral, Stevie J jumped in. This is what Stevie had to say. Stevie says, at Jocelyn, aren't you the same one who lied and said I molested my own daughter? 
and is now speaking hurtful against a child with autism? Don't you have an autistic brother? Since you want ratings, let's talk about you and Barbie that's on your show out here doing strange things for some change. Did you tell Ballistic that you was hitting my line every day for gang to pull up with the coca? My wife is a class act, something you could never be. She can handle herself. I'm with all the shits. So once Stevie J said that, Jocelyn didn't really have a response. But I just find this hypocritical and I find this to this moment that she's doing with Wendy. One, she's trying to basically deflect from that whole back and forth that went on with Faith Evans and Stevie J last week because what she said to Faith was very disrespectful. Because even in that interview, I don't see what Faith said that really triggered her to go there and call her son an animal and go in on him. When there's a lot of people out here who do have autistic children and children with disabilities who may not be out there mentally. And, you know, why would you call them an animal? That's not okay. Because she wouldn't want anybody talking about her beautiful daughter. You know, so I just find that really just disrespectful so you know the hypocrisy is right with this you know she wants to go in on wendy and demand all of this respect from wendy but she seems to have a lot of lack of respect for other people and i'm not even talking about her past antics on love and hip-hop but even just something as recently as last week with faith evans faith was telling her truth she didn't disrespect jocelyn jocelyn could have let it go but she went there drugged the sun and you know just all types of stuff that wasn't necessary so now we fast forward to today. And so I don't watch Jocelyn's Cabaret. Um, it's not really my cup of tea. Like I said, I'm not subscribing to Zeus to watch anything. If it's on VH1 or something like that, I would glance at it. But being that you had to subscribe to Zeus, I I'm not. But I haven't heard like overwhelming reviews. I know it has a cult following. But for her to act like this is the number one show in the United States is just, it's very comical because... Outside of the shade room, I don't know anyone who talks about this show, like not amongst my friends, not amongst younger people. It's never anything I'm requested to talk about. So, you know, I'm kind of confused where this ego's coming in and she's saying she has a number one show in the country. No, maybe on Zeus, but not in the country. Wendy wasn't wrong about that. You know, that's a whole different level there. You know, you could be number one on Zeus, but to be number one in the country, uh, yeah, those are two different stages. So I just found that interesting. So I went to go and find out, well, what is this show about? You know, is it about women empowerment? Is she helping to get girls out the strip club? You know, what is the premise of this show? I understand that things with the word cabaret tends to be a show. And when I think cabaret, I think of strip teases and Moulin Rouge. So I went to go look it up to find out the whole series synopsis. And so this is what they're saying on Wikipedia. They're saying Jocelyn's Cabaret chronicles the everyday life of Jocelyn Hernandez as she struggles to launch a cabaret show in Miami, Florida. The show is set in Give Miami, a strip club where Jocelyn worked a decade ago and provides an inside look into everyday life of strippers, sex workers, and is reminiscent of the 1998 Players Club. The dancers featured in the cabaret appear as supporting cast members in confessionals and interview segments throughout the series. This include Daisy, Jocelyn's friend, and self-professed bottom bitch, as well as dancers, and then they go on to name the dancers. Then they talk about how it was also set in Miami, because I guess she's on season two. So this one they're saying is set in a mansion in Atlanta, Georgia, and chronicles Jocelyn's second attempt to launch a cabaret show. And the show introduces a reality competition element where 10 girls living together in a mansion with Jocelyn and Ballistic, the top four dancers are cast in the cabaret performance with an overall winner being given $10,000 in cash and an opportunity to perform at a cabaret in Las Vegas. So that is the premise of the show. And the drama comes in because they're saying that, you know, the strippers of today are not classy like the strippers of yesteryear. And she's supposed to be training them to be better, you know, strippers and carry themselves a certain way that a cabaret show would carry themselves as opposed to just a regular strip club. So long story short, this show is not about women empowerment. Like I'm confused as to why she's acting like this is a show that's about to benefit the entire black community. You know, it's a, it's another ratchet show like Love and Hip Hop. You know, every TV show out here has their fan base. I don't think there's anything wrong with the show per se or the concept. Let's not act like you, you have a show where you're grooming a bunch of future scientists, lawyers, 
and people who are going to make a big difference in society, as opposed to people cloud chasing and looking for fame to spawn off their modeling career, Instagram career, rap career, and whatever else. Like, that's what a lot of these shows are based off of. But she's talking as if this is a whole show, you know, where women are just going to better themselves. So I, I was also able to find some clips of the show, so I'm going to go ahead and play them for you guys right now. Check this out. I feel it in my heart that getting to Atlanta, where I was at for so long, the performance, Jocelyn's Cabaret, is going to happen. I feel like the ladies from season two are going to understand Jocelyn's Cabaret. I want to hear how y'all gonna move forward because if you guys fight one more time, I'm sending one of y'all home. I speculate to understand this. You can change your life and you can get out of the, the gutter. Are you crying? I am. What's going on? Why are you crying? Then it hit home for me. So come step up. Come step up. Let, let me let me hear you. What what happened? I was saying it's the gutter is a rough place, you know, okay. and you got to do everything, any and everything to make it, you know, every situation, in including aborted twins, you feel me, to better yourself because a dude want to leave you. But you just had an abortion? Twins? Twins. Mm. Yeah, double homicide. Sorry. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I forgot about you when you walked up here, bitch. Bitch, I forget about me, y'all. Yeah, bitch, I'm here talking about, about me. Yeah, so loose pussy ass. Bitch, how you know that? Because clearly you can't hold a baby in it. Oh, shit. Drag this bitch through the ah! Damn, the bitch just got an abortion. And she popping that pussy right in front of my face. I was like, what blood clot gonna come out of there? Bitch, I ain't got no right, nap. So you guys just saw those snippets of what goes on on the show, so. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. Hey, tea sippers To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.